Hello and welcome. Today I'll be discussing the product Cloudberry Remote Assistant. Now, for anyone who has used Team Viewer, Cloudberry is a relatively new player in the market that aims to fill the same footprint set by Team Viewer. Team Viewer has a free and a paid model, and of late, those people with a free Team Viewer license have been pestered, whereby it has become technically impossible to use the product. Effectively, every minute one gets a, an alert that one's behavior is not that of a free user and is bombed out from the session. This is followed by a 10 minute wait time and again after the 10 minute one logs in and is again bombed out. For some of us um, the use of TeamViewer is really to manage a computer on uh, the other side of the room um, without having to get up. And sadly this uh, is no longer possible with, with this product. Without further ado though let us look at Cloudberry Remote Assistant and with Cloudberry what we have is a relatively new tool not as mature as TeamViewer but in my opinion very usable if you A are using one of the platforms shown here so at the moment uh, Cloudberry is available for Windows and is in beta for Mac and iOS. New platforms will surely come especially uh, given the popularity this product seems to be earning. In my demo here today I'm going to demonstrate the Windows version of the product. So when I click the download button I am presented with two options. Option number one is to download the full version of the product, while the second option is the quick support option. The full version requires that you install an application on your computer, while the remote assistant um, does not require uh, an installation and therefore is very useful in those situations where friend, relative needs some form of support and it's simpler to ask them to low browser-based client rather than run them through the entire installation proceed. Since I'm going to go with the full product today, the first thing you need to do is specify your email address, tell Google you're not a robot and help its algorithms a bit and after that you can download the product. I'm going to download my product onto the desktop. Now, um, you will notice that each download seems to have an activation code. There is no need to install this activation code as that activation code is part of the download file. You will notice 616109, 616109 repeated there and the program will automatically pick it up. So in my case I'm going to leave this window temporarily open and take it from there. This is my installer which I'm going to double click. The installer in my particular case I'm going to accept all the defaults. Now um, before we delve further into Cloudberry I would like to point out that as I hinted before Cloudberry is not as mature as TeamViewer in the sense that it, it lacks some of the platforms there are and TeamViewer seems to have a more mature interface. Having said that I have been using this product without any problem uh, whatsoever so my invitation would be to give it a try. Once I double click the program you will notice the activation code got populated automatically and I'm going to start freeway. Cloudberry make it a point to emphasize that their product is free with no strings attached. Again we see freeway being liberally used. So this is the Cloudberry remote assistance um, program window. What is different here is that 
much of it seems very familiar to what we have with TeamViewer. Cloudberry have other products and they use the side window to do some self-promotion. I mean, that is the least one could expect from a product, you know, that TeamViewer charges on a monthly basis a considerable amount of money. Like TeamViewer, the computer has an ID and a PIN. Very soon I'll be showing how uh, you can modify and improve uh, these settings. Once I click on the hamburger menu, the menu comes up and from this menu we have some customization and some functionality. The first link, Generate Invitation Link, allows you to generate a link you can share via, so via email, via um, chat, with a third party. So you specify how long that link will be active, you specify the duration, and you generate. You can copy that link and send it to a person who will then, upon clicking that link, be able to connect to your computer. In my case, since this um, uh, demonstration it will not uh, show the linkage of two computers, uh, I'll skip that option. Next in line is the options, and uh, the options are quite straightforward. The first option is um, whether you want uh, sound to be muted and um, what name you want to give your computer. The default is the host computer name. I will not be changing that. What happens when you send window when you send uh, windows key combinations? You have three options apply them to this computer apply them to the remote computer or the third option is apply them to the remote computer only when the computer is running in, in full screen. If you're chatting with, with the other person you have the option to save the chat um, messages. In my case I'm going to set this up on my desktop so that we can use it at a later stage. What happens when the application finishes you can either minimize it to the system tray, which is the option I will use, or you can close it. If you close the application, it will not be able to take any more incoming requests until it is manually activated. In a scenario where you are working, you know, as, as I explained in the very beginning, uh, you have a computer in another room and you simply want to be able to access it frequently, the option you should choose is minimize to system tray. In the remote assistant world, you have two options. You can either be the computer who will accept incoming calls, or you can be the computer originating the call. If your computer is the one which is going to receive calls from someone who is going to support, or it is an unattended computer, you need to leave the prevent incoming connections unchecked. When you do that, you have the option to select what type of connectivity computers that connect to yours will have. You can either have full control or you can have view only. Full control, you need to be aware that the person on the other end will be able to, to do practically whatever they want. View only is more appropriate when you want to demonstrate to a third party because of a lack of a level of trust or because um, you are demoing a, a product, a topic, a lesson, you can have the view only. In that case, those that are connected to you will be able to see what you are doing on your screen. You have the option to prompt for incoming connections, which means that when uh, someone is making a request, a pop-up will come up and tell you, do you want to allow this, yes or no? You can also share a specific application. So rather than giving the person the full control, the remote person only has access to one particular application. Again, this adds another layer of security. There is the option for allow LAN direct connections, which is in beta at this point in time, and, and uh, allow internet direct connections. Again, this is, be, is in beta. I will not be uh, delving into these topics, and I'm leaving them as their default. 
close applications when the incoming connection is terminated. This is self-explanatory. And the other one is that if there is no activity uh, after a specified amount of time, uh, the applications will be closed. This option will shut down and, and, and give a clean slate um, after the person has left. The next option is um, file transfer. And again, I am going to use the desktop. Let's go back into options. Okay. Next in line is security. Now, this is an important feature. Basically, here you can request that the session is encrypted. If you enable this uh, particular box, you will have a key which is generated. If you change the key for this computer, any uh, pre-existing keys will be uh, invalidated automatically. So in my case, since this is a new installation, it does not make a difference. In a future video, I will um, show how this key uh, comes into use. Do I want to allow unattended access? Um, the unattended access uh, means that person will not be challenged for the pin we saw in the beginning of the session. Why? Because when this were the case, no one would be able to enter because that pin changes. So in my case, I'm going to say allow unattended access. And going back to the pin, if you remember, the pin was four digits long. So if I go back, I had a pin which is four digits long. If I want more security, I can increase the pin length. I need to save. And you will see that the pin has changed. Going back to where we left, you can even have that the pin is reset every um, so often. So you can specify, I want to reset my pin every one day. For unattended access, this functionality goes against what unattended access is, and one can't work with the other. Proxy settings are functions that will be necessary if you are operating within an environment where you are not able to make a direct connection to the internet unless you are going through a middleware. If this is the case, you may have to specify the address and port to get to the proxy server that will grant you access to the outside world. Finally, you have logging. Logging keeps a track of the traffic and is very helpful if you need to communicate a problem or an issue. I have found that the Cloudberry team are very helpful and uh, sometimes providing this log can help them help you better. That is the configuration we have at the moment. You will notice that an encryption is off and an attended access is off. So the setup I have here now is that if someone wants to connect to this computer, I will either send an invitation link or if I'm speaking on a phone or on chat, I will communicate my ID and my PIN. For people who might be watching this at a later point when the product has developed even more, the build and the version of the product this demonstration is based on is 2.1.0. 0.25. In videos to follow soon, we will demonstrate how to connect with the various options Cloudberry offer. For anyone who wants to start and themselves, you have two options. This option, allow remote control. This option, control a remote computer. Anyone who has used TeamViewer will easily recognize the similarity in, in the thought process. The same options can be selected from here. Cloudberry Labs are really, really working hard to get this product known to the whole wide world. And they always encourage um, uh, people to help them leave a review. That's all for today. Hope to see you very soon.